Great music, but have you seen the world's hardest game on the internet? Uh, pretty impossible for uh, slow people like me to uh, get across, and then you die uh, trying to get to the green area. Uh, what I'm going to do is attempt to make my own version of the game in Scratch. So I'm going to get rid of the cat, and I'm going to create that little... Uh, Keep that in the background so I can see what's going on. I'm going to create the little uh, red square. Hold shift down to ensure that your square is in fact square. Okay, we're done. I can make that a bit smaller by clicking the shrink sprite. Now I need to create the blue balls to uh, bounce around. So I'm going to create a new sprite. Now to make your red square move, simple way would be similar to the Pac-Man tutorial I've done before is to go control when a particular key is pressed let's start with the up arrow go to motion point in that direction first so point up and then move let's try 10 steps that should do and then program all the other directions in the same way to make it go yep goes up Let's try the other directions. Okay, so now my square moves around, but the blue baddie doesn't bounce at all. Now, before I make him bounce, what I'll probably do is make the uh, game environment. So I'm going to create a new sprite. Uh, I'm going to zoom out for this and use the straight line to make a simple maze. Hold the shift key down to make a straight line. Okay, that's a fairly rough approximation of the uh, world's hardest game board. Maybe grow that a little bit and uh, move it into place. You have to be careful to click on the very edge. I'm just going to shrink these sprites, they're much too big. Okay, now this uh, blue sprite here, I want it to glide up and down from this spot. Okay, this spot, I can see what it is. It's 77 something. So look here, when I, uh, 77, 77 in fact. What I did was I double clicked on that and that gave the coordinates to the instructions here. So this will save me time. Now I'm going to have some motion. Uh, so control when flag clicked, go to. Okay, we'll start by going to a particular spot, going to that spot. Now we're not going to change the Y coordinate. We're only going to change the X coordinate across. We're only going to change the across value. So forever now, just make this happen forever throughout the game forever and I'm going to uh, make him glide uh, we'll try two so we'll try one second two so we're going to change the x coordinate to uh, this one here which is about minus 60 I can see on the board minus 60 and glide back to where he started and so from 60 and back to that point, 77, 74. Again, just changing the uh, x-axis. So let's see what happens when flag clicked. That's about right. Okay, I'm trying to get this one perfect because I'm going to duplicate it in a minute. So let's make that small. Let's try and work out what, if it's going to look like this game. Okay, that will do, I think. So now I'm going to duplicate this sprite uh, by going control click, duplicate, 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 control click, duplicate, or you can use a clone stamp there. I'm now going to move these into place. I'm going to have this one start over here, 
this one starts over here and this one starts over here. No, it's under that one. Okay, it's close enough. Now, this character, at the moment he can go through the maze, that's not very good. Uh, so when I'm playing my game, he goes through the maze, and nor does he get eaten by these guys, he doesn't die. So, a couple of things I'm going to have to change. One, uh, for a start, when I when flag clicked, he should go to a pos p position to start. So let's start him at this position, which is minus 157.39. Minus 157.39. And that's where he starts. Second thing, I've got to make him bounce off the maze. So, if touching, so let's do another one, uh, or I could keep this one. Forever if, forever if touching, so sensing uh, the maze. If touching the maze, which is sprite three, I haven't given it a decent name. Motion, turn. Let's say 180 degrees, which is the exact opposite direction, and move away a little bit. Okay, just test that. Yeah, it seems to work. In other words, he's turning away and bouncing off. That's one way of doing it. Now let's stop everything again. We've got to make him disappear when he touches them. So, when flag clicked, uh, forever if, if touching, uh, the blue. I'll tell you what we might do for this actually. If this, then it's for all the sprites that are that colour. So if touching colour, I'm going to click on the colour and select that blue colour. So if touching the colour blue, uh, I could make him just hide, but I might try a ghosting effect like in the actual game. Uh, because in this actual game over here, when he dies, if we just see that, he ghosts out, he fades away. So let's try that. I'm going to change effect. Change ghost effect by six. I'll try that. Um, now, this might only work if he's actually touching the baddie. Look, look, I can still see him there. That's not going completely ghosted. So I'm going to have to put a forever in to make it continue to ghost in there. Now that should work. Even if I'm not touching it, that should work. Okay, now we have to have a windscreen when he touches the green. So I'm just going to start by putting a, uh, another sprite, actually. I'll make another sprite at the green area. Let's make a solid... And when I touch that, I'm going to have to have a win screen. So uh, let's program my sprite one. Uh, if, okay, when flag clicked, I'm just going to start it as a different command. When flag clicked, forever, if, if touching, Colour, so if touching colour, let's choose that. If touching again, I'm going to choose that colour off my game. If touching that colour, I'm going to broadcast a message to a, to a screen I haven't made yet. So, broadcast message. Um, some control, I think. Broadcast, and I make a new message. Uh, so that's going to be win. You can just type that. Broadcast win. Now my new sprite I'm going to make is going to have a black fill and a white font. Win, okay. Right, now this screen, now my windscreen, you can make it more interesting. When the flag's clicked on the windscreen, I'm gonna make the windscreen hide. When I receive win, then show. Okay, so when flags clicked, hide. When I receive that message that broadcasts, then show. So let's see what we get now. Let's see if I can, luckily I've made this badly, that I can hopefully 
win. Oh no, it was too slow. Let's have another go at this game. And it is, after all, impossible. Let me go this way. Yes, and I win.